Alrighty folks, so this is our plate tectonic simulator if you can't seem to uh, uh, open this program on your computer. I know it doesn't work on Windows or it doesn't work on Mac and it's got a few issues on some Windows machines. So here is the simulation. So here we are in the crust tab, right? And the point here is we're going to try to uh, get this piece of crust in the middle here, right, that I can move up and down, right? Um, we're going to try to match that first to the continental crust over here, both in thickness and in height, right, in elevation. Um, so this is harking back again to the importance of density to plate tectonics, right? So remember back to our first lab, not only was the proportion or the relative density important, but also was the thickness or the elevation, right? So let's try to match this continental crust. There's a couple different ways to do it here. First, we can zoom out see all the different layers of the earth here but uh, you'll notice really how thin of a, a thing we're dealing with here right so very much just the uh, the candy coating shell of the earth here right so let's try to match this first the continental crust first thing we need to do is thicken it up right make it roughly as thick right and then we can change the temperature right warmer things are less dense that makes them rise and fall just a little bit. But we can also change the composition. This is getting at our density, right? So more iron, uh, magnesium as well. Iron and magnesium rich minerals, uh, which are prevalent in our oceanic crust, have a lot higher density than those silica rich minerals, which are prevalent in our continental crust. So let's try to adjust this here. Move this up. All right, make sure that line disappears. Hey, and actually I did a pretty good job there, didn't I? Huh? There's a few different ways to do this, but so this is what you'd want to to draw down on your uh, on your uh, um, under number two there for the draw small triangles or whatever. Just denote where these kind of these these variables have ended up, right? Now let's go ahead and try to match up the oceanic crust, right? As we notice, that's much thinner. So let's start there. Go pretty thin, right? Matching it quite good. Let's could make it cooler a little bit, right? Matching it pretty good there. A little more, maybe iron, right? It's not too bad right there, right? Make that even there, and then we can warm it up a little bit, right? Oh, that's pretty good right there. A little less, touch less, right? So about there is what you want to draw or write down for the second one, though, the oceanic crust, right? So it's fairly warm. It's got more iron than the uh, than the continental crust, right? And it's also much thinner than the continental crust, right? So that is the important uh, part of, of the first part there. So in part two, we want to look at convergent plate boundaries, right? Now let's take a look here. Actually, let me open up this lab. All right. So we just did these two parts, right? Now we're moving on to part two, right? So what we're going to do here is fill in this chart, right? I'm going to do the first one here with you. And uh, when it says draw arrows to show movement, um, you're going to, you know, all of these are converging together, but you want to notice they're just kind of going straight into each other. If one's going under or over the other, uh, which crust is denser, which crust subducts, not always do we have subduction, right? Which form of uh, volcanic mountains or regular mountains, right? Does a trench form on which side do the volcanoes form? Again, this won't always be uh, uh, applicable to all of these situations. So just write NA in there if it doesn't fit or just dash it out or whatever, right? So let's look at this first one. Let's do a continental, continental. Uh, so we do continental crust. Put continental crust here, right? Let's go ahead and show labels, right? So let's go ahead and show some temperatures and stuff like that, right? And then let's do them in a uh, convergence setting. It's going to be this green arrow here. So you notice as they smash together, do we see any subduction? No, nothing's really going underneath each other. It's like two cars that played crumple, right? Or played uh, chicken and nobody backed off, right? So this is an example we have in like the Himalayan mountains, right? So this would be our continental continental collision, right? They're moving together. Which crust is denser? Neither one is denser. Which crust subducts? Neither one subducts, right? Uh, which formed volcano, volcanic mountains or regular mountains? Well, we have regular mountains here, right? Is, uh, does a trench form? No. Well, which side did the volcanoes form? Well, there's no volcanoes, so uh, that doesn't make any sense, all right? So let's do the next simulation here. All right, let's reset all, all right? Um, and then we're going to do continental crust 
on this left side and old ocean crust on the right side right and again we're going to show labels let's show some seawater um let's do density and all that good stuff as well right and then let's run this simulation again we're going to do a convergent simulation so let's go ahead and run this right and what we see here is definitely subduction right that old oceanic crust going under that continental crust right and what we notice is happening here is we're starting to get that partial melting from that water being driven off of those plates right and that's going to rise buoyantly and cause a string of volcanic mountains right so this is our volcanic arc right uh, this is a trench right where those two plates meet we form a trench right and we definitely see some subduction here so you can fill in the rest of this chart using uh, this graph here so this is again continental old ocean right now for the next simulation we're gonna do the exact same thing but we're just gonna switch the sides to see if that makes anything any difference in plate tectonics right uh, should it make any difference in plate tectonics well the answer is obviously no right so here again we have subduction of the oceanic crust continental crust uh, overriding we form a trench we have a volcanic arc that forms right next it wants us to do uh let's do continental on this left side and young ocean on this side right so now similarly the oceanic crust is still uh denser so it's gonna uh you know uh, subduct underneath the, the continental crust but notice right at how much lower of an angle it's subducting right those volcanic those volcanoes are much farther inland right and it subducts at a much lower angle that's because it's young it's still fairly warm it's less dense right and then uh, just to prove again that sides make no difference let's flip it and run it right again same thing descends but at a, a lower angle right less of an angle that pushes those volcanoes farther inland perfect all right do this again we're gonna do old ocean and young ocean this time old ocean on this side young ocean on this side right what should we see again old ocean right is uh, going to be sitting on the ocean floor longer uh, it's going to be cooling down even over millions of years, so it's going to be older, it's going to be colder, it's going to be denser, and we should see that it goes down, right? Oops, let me do uh, everything here. All right, and there we go, right? Old ocean crust, denser than the young ocean crust, right? So again, we see subduction, right? We see a trench form, we see volcanoes form. However, this time the volcanoes make islands, so we have a volcanic island arc, right? Let's see if switching sides makes any difference, right? So let's do old ocean on this side and young ocean on this side, right? Does it make any difference? Nope, the old ocean still goes down, right? Alrighty. You should then be able to use, fill out the rest of that, that, uh, that chart and answer the following, you know, six or seven, eight, nine, those questions, you know, 10, 11, 12, right? Um, and then let's take a look at part three, right? So for part three, um, we're gonna stay on, on this tab here, but we're gonna explore, uh, you know, that we just explored a, a um, convergent boundaries. Now we're gonna look at divergent and transform boundaries, right? So for this first one, we're going to do old ocean, right? Old ocean, right? And then I'm going to I'm going to show labels, show seawater, right? Show both density and temperature. And what we should notice here, right? And we're going to select the red arrow, and that's going to be a divergent margin, right? So let's watch these move apart, right? So we notice as the old ocean crust gets pushed out of the way or pulled out of the way, new mantle comes in to fill that in, and we get younger and younger crust towards the center older and older out towards the side right let me rewind that and do that all again here right so old ocean crust so this is a mid-ocean ridge say in the middle of our atlantic ocean right a spreading center let's 
So you should be able to use this to fill in the rest of that uh, old ocean, old ocean crust simulation. And now I'm going to set it with two continental crusts. This is part two of, of section three there. Um, two continental crusts. And we're going to go in the motion of the blue arrows. All right, what type of boundary is this? Blue arrow, here we go. Ah, interesting. Right. San Andreas, here we go, All right? You can use that to answer part two. Right. And then for part three here, the third simulation in this part, we're gonna do again, continental continental right and we're going to move it in the direction of the green arrow right i think we've already seen this before but there's an example right you notice that we're just thickening shortening and thickening that continental crust right all folks that should uh, be able to get you through the rest of the lab enjoy <laughs>